Hello fabulous friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Bang Bang Von Lula, I'm a burlesque dancer producer and a beauty enthusiast. If you're a fan of burlesque, vintage hair and makeup, regular everyday hair and makeup, please do consider subscribing to my channel. Every subscription gets me closer to my goal. So today is a very requested video. I am going to be talking all about setting my hair for vintage styling. Way back at the beginning of this channel, I did a video all about the midi haircut, and I did a really quick brush out sort of tutorial, and I had a lot of friends and folks come to me asking about how I actually set my hair to get to the brush out point. Because of how hectic my life is and how busy I am, I don't really ever dapple in wet sets, so anything that is set with wet hair, be it curling rods or curlers or pin curls, I tend to lean towards the quicker way, which is heat styling. The heat styling method that I prefer is curling irons. Uh, for a long time, when I first started delving into vintage hairstyles, which was way, way back, like I want to say I was 19 when I started to do that, so that was well over um, 10 years ago now. <laughs> uh, but I was using a lot of like hot rollers, but now I find that it's easier for me to control the process if I use a curling iron. I thought I would spice today up by trying something kind of new for me, but in the same vein of what I do regularly, which is following a vintage pin curl set pattern. There are some super fun setting patterns that you can do to emulate old movie stars and stuff like that, so today I'm going to be following a kind of a jumble of different patterns, because I tend to honestly just go for it and hope for the best because I'm just that way, and I should probably try to have some structure about it because then I would have more consistent outcomes for my pin curl sets or my hot sets, and yeah. So we're gonna try something kinda new, but um, also I've played around with these patterns in my own brain, but I'm gonna try to be really structured today. So let's talk a little bit about vintage style pin curl sets. These sets were made to give you longevity within your hairstyle so you could get it professionally set, which is a lot of the, you know, going to the salon and getting your hair done on a weekly basis, which was an old school thing to do. And I honestly miss that. I wish that we had more of that. Getting your hair set and able to wear it for many, many days is something that I really, really love about vintage hairstyling. It goes through many different phases, like you wear it down and then after it gets a little dirty, you can wear it up and it still has really great structure to have different types of vintage styles. Traditionally speaking, most of vintage hairstyling from the 1930s, 40s, and 50s were a wet set, as I said before, but there is a way to kind of finesse a curling iron into giving you a similar result, though I will give a disclaimer that wet sets have a lot more lasting power, but they take more time to do. And as I said, I'm a busy bitch, I can't do wet sets, and frankly, I haven't perfected them yet, so I really prefer to use the curling iron method so I know what my results will be. Now let's talk about prepping the hair and products that I use to do that and the products that I will use through this process. So as you can see, my hair is just thrown up in a bun. Um, I recently dyed it. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a little something so you can click on it, but I dyed the blonde ombre that I had into a really fun ginger color, and I haven't washed it in probably two days. The great benefit of having like two-day-old hair for these styles is that it helps kind of hold everything a little bit more as long as you're not too oily. And also it adds a little bit of extra protection for heating tools because of the natural oils in your hair. It'll add as a little barrier when you're using curling irons or whatever it is that you're gonna use, I really suggest that you try on at least like two day hair. And I'm not uh, condemning having freshly washed hair and doing something like this because I do it often. Sometimes it gets a little too heavy and I really want a lot of weird volume, probably mostly for a burlesque act. And I'll do this on clean hair. So a way to combat sort of greasier roots when the 
tips of your hair, which always are drier or at that sweet spot, but your roots are a little kind of off, I suggest everybody's best friend, which is dry shampoo. I have been a dry shampoo guy for like ever. I love dry shampoo. Not only does it remove the oiliness, it also adds a little bit of texture, so it's a win-win situation for me. So currently, the dry shampoo I'm using is the Collab Dry Shampoo Original Formula, and they claim it's an amazing oil absorption without the white residue. So let's talk about white residue. Um, with darker hair, there are some companies like Batiste that have a sort of slightly tinted dry shampoo because this is a virtually sort of white aerosol powder that you spray in and then let it sit and then rub through to absorb the oil in your hair. But some brands are super, super powdery and white and then it just leaves a weird cast in your hair. I'm going to go ahead and take my hair down and apply this dry shampoo just to my roots and show you that process. So here we are. My hair is definitely a mess. I let it air dry last time that I washed it, so it's all just crazy. Um, but as I said, the ends are very dry, and the roots, as you can see, are getting a little oily. I've definitely had worse oily roots before, um, but this is almost, I'd say, the perfect amount of dirtiness I want in my hair to do this style. So we're going to go ahead and just absorb a little of that oil with the dry shampoo. Make sure you give it a really good shake. So I'm just going to go ahead and spray it in the roots. A technique of mine is to make sure that you lift different layers of your hair to make sure that they get a little blast of dry shampoo. If you just spray it flat like this, you're not going to get great distribution of the product. So just, you know, lift up and concentrate on your most oily bits. So I'm going to let the product sit in my hair for a couple minutes just to do its little absorption thing and then we're going to brush it through. It's been about two minutes and I'm just going to take my detangling brush and just run it all the way through my hair, all the way down to the tips. Okay, now we have de-oiled my roots. I am going to protect my ends with a heat protectant spray. So I've been using the same heat protectant spray for many, many years. It's pretty good, it's very affordable. I don't really notice a difference between heat protectant sprays, honestly. This one is the Beyond the Zone Turn Up the Heat Flat Iron Protection Spray. And it also works as a shine spray, which I will show you at the end. But yeah, I concentrate this on the ends of my hair about to where the color stops because this does add a little greasiness. So you don't want to get it on the roots that you just um, de-oiled with the dry shampoo. What I like to do is kind of grab my hair in, in a bundle and put this just here. Not too much because it'll weigh down the hair. Flip it to the other side, hold it up, and then distribute it with my fingers. After I've done that, I'll go back with my detangling brush and just brush it through and bring the brush up higher because that will naturally bring the product higher without making your roots greasy. Now we're gonna section off the hair. I've been doing it the same way for years. <laughs> I don't know that it's the best way, but it works best for me. Whenever I try to change it up, I just confuse myself. So let's stick to the tried and true. I'm going to take my thumbs right above my ear and I'm going to create a line with them and meet them in the back of my head. And that is my first section. So I'm just lifting the rest of the hair up and I'm going to secure it with a hair tie. Now that we've sectioned off the first portion of hair, I'm going in with my curling iron. So my curling iron isn't particularly fancy, but I do love that it has an interchangeable head. Um, I have various different barrel sizes and styles, and it also shows me the temperature of the iron. 
the automatic temperature is 180 degrees and that's just what I do because I try not to put too much heat in my hair. I find that because it's a little processed, it gets fried pretty easily. So we keep it at 180 and just are very, very careful. So before I go in with my curling iron, I make sure I have my little bag of alligator clips nearby. They look like this. You can buy them in quite a lot of quantity at Sally's Beauty Supply and they open like that. And you'll see how I use them, but they're just really, really great for keeping the curl in shape while they cool down. I'm going to start on this side, and I'm going to take a pretty small section of hair. As I've said, my hair is pretty thin, so this is a little bit easier for me than those of you lucky, lucky folks who have that beautiful thick hair. Um, but I try to keep it as a manageable section so that the curling iron can do its work without having to recurl the hair and kind of add more heat damage to it. An important thing for a smooth curl is to make sure you brush through the section before you use the curling iron on it so that it curls with the hair all in a uniform sort of clump. So what I like to do is hold the hair at a taut sort of 45 degree angle because that helps give lift to the root. And now I'm going to take this curling iron. I believe that this is the quarter inch barrel. I'll check and put it down in the description box, but a pretty small barreled curling iron always gives you a little bit more of an authentic look. I'm gonna clip this. And just roll it down. I like to do the ends last so they don't get super fried. Just make sure you get those little ends clipped in there. And release. So while the curl is still warm, you're gonna wanna take it and re-roll it like this all the way down to your scalp. You wanna take that little alligator clip and just secure it to your scalp. This is like a standing sort of a pin curl style, so you're getting that volume at the root, which I really like. You can also pin them flat to your head like this way, but I prefer for volume to have them standing up. Also, I want to mention that the amount of time that you keep your curling iron on your hair varies from hair type to hair type. If you have really fine, fragile, processed hair, which mine is almost that, um, you don't want to keep the curling iron on there too long because you could burn off your hair or super, super damage it. So just make sure that you use a heat protectant and know your hair's sort of withstandability to heat. And um, I don't really know what to say for everybody, but for me, I kind of do it like five seconds at a time. Like I roll it down, keep it for five, move it up, roll the tips in keep it down for five and release. But some people I've watched them do it much longer but their hair is just a lot stronger than mine. So it depends on your hair type. I'm going to repeat this process all over my head. And as you've noticed, I'm rolling down for this part. I will change the direction of my curls for different sections, but this first go round is rolling down all across. So here's a little trick that I have. If you miss the ends, which I do constantly, honestly, if you get the curl rolled back up in time, you can use the heat from the rest of your hair to kind of finish off that tip by just shoving it in there so it's encased in the rest of the warm hair. All right, so that first row is done, and I'm gonna go ahead and continue that style of curling under all the way up to this top section of hair. So now we're moving to the top section of hair. So it kind of goes right here. It's probably 
not the most perfect part, but I kind of wing it as I said, <laughs> um, but it'll work for this purpose. And I'm going to reference those vintage pin curling sets uh, patterns that I saw on Pinterest, and we're going to see what happens. I prefer a very deep part to one side or the other, and I think today I'm going to do it. Let's see which eyebrow I like better today. Something I've always done is try to match the arch of my eyebrow, so right here to where I want to do my part. I find that it looks a little better or different. I just prefer it. I don't know. You tell me if I'm crazy in the comments. I know I'm crazy. I'm going to start with this section. I'm going to take this part a little further back and move it over. I do have a bit of a cowlick here, so I kind of prefer to roll this whole section back to just work with the cowlick instead of against it. I'm going to start with this top section right here, and I'm going to have it flat against my head going in this direction. So it's counterclockwise, and I'll show you really quick how I do that with one, and then we'll speed through the rest. This is a pretty thin section of hair, so I'm only going to do two different rows. I'll start off with this separation, and I'm only going to separate it into two different pin curls, so do this first one. I'm still going to curl it under, but I'm going to pin it in a certain direction. I'm pinning it flat against my head, going in a counterclockwise direction, and I'm going to secure it with one of the clips. I'm going to repeat that process with the second section of hair. I don't know if you noticed there, but I actually used the curling iron in the opposite direction, so up instead of under, to see if it would make the direction easier, and it kind of did but I don't think it honestly really matters, but somebody correct me, I'm not sure. I'm experimenting right now. I'm not positive, but it seemed to go down easier in the counterclockwise direction when I curled the hair up instead of over. Okay, now we're gonna do the second section, and I'm going to curl it going clockwise. <laughs> So now I'm going to be pinning this the other direction, which is towards my face. So if you imagine the wave, these are going away and these are going forwards. All right, so that's done. Hopefully it turns out well, we'll see. Now I'm going to take the back section of my hair, which is the cowlick section, and I'm going to just do a few rolls just going straight back, curled under to give lift to the root. So this is going to be the super fun part. Um, I'm going to take the same pattern where I go counterclockwise and clockwise and I'm going to do that in the sections all the way back, all the way down, and hopefully that'll create a really fun wave kind of a Veronica Lake effect that we could also tease into a volume style. Um, yeah, we're going to just try and see how it goes. All right, so I finished that first row, and they're all going in this direction, kind of away from my face, so this way, and the next row will curl this way towards my face. So I think I finally cracked my curling iron method here, so I'm curling under to go 
counterclockwise and over to go clockwise. Seems to make sense. I just was unable to verbalize that until just now. I think that we have finished. Um, as I said, this was an experiment of just trying to be really structured with how I was curling. So everything up until this top section was curled down and under and clipped to be a standing curl to give volume at the root. And that's all the way to the back, which I'll show you right now what the back looks like. Apologies if it's janky. I promise when it's brushed out, it'll look much better. So for the front section, I went with a deep side part aligning with the arch of my eyebrow. And for this first row right here, I went clockwise away from my face. And the second section right here counterclockwise towards my face. On the other side of the part, I began the same way, going clockwise away from my face, counterclockwise, and so on and so forth. So I think that's just three sections here, but that should give a nice wave, and we'll see how it all blends together. Now, the trick with a hot set is to make sure that the curls cool completely. That will definitely make a big difference in the longevity of your set, the tightness of your curl, and just the overall look. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up this guy. Sometimes you'll find that they'll fall a little bit during the process, and you can unclip them and just tighten them back up if you see that. Oh, there we go. And I'm going to take my absolute favorite for years hairspray. This is the Beyond the Zone Frozen Stiff Freezing Hairspray. And this is, bottle has seen a lot of um, burlesque shows. That's why it's all dented. It's been in my burlesque suitcase. But it gives you great hold, volume, and shine. And it's one that you can use a brush through even after you've gotten nuts with it on your hair. And it doesn't leave that weird white residue that... Aquanet, for instance, will leave after you brush it. Um, it's a really wonderful product because it gives you all that oomph of something like Aquanet, but you can use a brush through it so you can get a lot more wear out of your hairstyle. So we're going to shake this up and give it a little spritz, and then we're going to wait for at least 10 minutes for everything to cool down, and then we'll see what the brush out's going to be like. We're back. It's been about 10 minutes, and I actually had to run outside to deal with a chicken thing that was going on outside. Um, and so my hair got a little wind wisped. But I do suggest that if you're going to not brush your hair out right away, that you use a headscarf to keep the pin curls intact. So I, this is my favorite one from my good friend Gigi Deluge. It's got little black cats on it, and I would literally just, you know, throw it up here and tie it up but i did not do that today so you know we got a little bit of wispiness but that's okay now i'm going to take out all of the little clips and see where we're at this is what it looks like right after the clips come out I just kind of let the curls fall as they wanted to you don't want to disturb or pull on them too much when you're taking the clips out just so you don't rip your hair and all that stuff I'm going to start with just my fingers and kind of run them through the hair as the first step of the brush out Even just using my fingertips to brush through the first initial thing, you can see that the shape has already begun to form in this awesome sort of S wave. So that's really good and promising. 
And now I'm gonna go in with my detangling brush and run it all the way through. Now this is after simply brushing the hair down. You can see I've pretty much splattened it out up here. But you can see that we're getting that nice shape. If you wanted more of a Veronica Lake type of look, which is that peekaboo sort of wave, you could just adjust and finesse it to kind of lay that way. But I'm looking for a bit more volume. So I'm going to go ahead and take this teasing comb and tease around the crown and probably in the back just to give a little bit more oomph back there. And let's see how that turns out. After teasing the hair at the root, I'm taking my hairspray and I'm just going to do a little blast to help keep that lift. Now here is what it looks like after a good tease. Um, I look crazy, but I'm letting the hairspray dry a little bit before I start to brush the top layer. So you don't want to brush the tease out, but just kind of shape it. And I'm going to see how well the volume sticks. And I'm going to actually put some hairspray right there and smooth it up with my hand to start shaping this section. Now it depends on, I guess, my mood, um, but sometimes I use a boar bristle brush to do the smoothing part because it helps not take all the tees out that you've just done. So I'm gonna try that today and see how it works out in shaping and smoothing the hair. Now notice that I'm holding up here at the root while I smooth this down so I don't tug on this and take away all that volume. I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to my detangling brush to kind of finesse this bottom section and marry the tees into the unteased part. So here we are. It's pretty good. Um, I'm kind of not digging that this is just all floundering on its own. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my teasing comb and I'm gonna form little sections and then pin them down and spray them so that they hold their form a little better. And yeah, I'm not sure. It's an experiment. It's going okay so far, but yeah, let's see. Okay, so we're back after a quick break. I actually had to have a little bite to eat in between because I got really hungry, but it took me a while to kind of finesse and figure out what the set wanted to do. And I feel like that's something that I struggle with a lot is that I have an idea of how it'll turn out and then it just turns out a little differently. But as long as I take the time to work with it, it always turns out pretty good. I do think that the setting pattern that I used helped create a nice swoop like this. And this piece obviously was created by the opposing pin curl direction, so I'm very pleased with that. After getting this sculpted, I went ahead and placed these clips in place to help form this shape and keep it in place, and then sprayed it like crazy with my hairspray. So now we're going to take these out and just kind of finesse the rest of the hair and see how it looks. Well, there you go. It stayed. I'm very pleased and I'm really happy that I was able to kind of work with it because at first, honestly, I was a little nervous that it wasn't going to work. I ended up brushing out a lot of the tees because I just felt like having a little bit more of a sleek look with the way that this shape sort of took place. And so it's just one of those things. You gotta kind of mess with things until it's the way that you want it. And it's, you know, it's an experiment. 
So for the final steps, I'm going to go ahead and spray everything with hairspray. And a good tip is as you go, smooth the areas you want nice and, and slick with your hand. So like a little spray and smooth and it will help it keep that nice smoothness. And to add a little bit more shine to the ends, since I don't put too, too much hairspray down here so it's not very, very stiff, I'm actually going to take that hair heat protectant spray, just spray it into my hand, rub my hands together, and you see it's kind of got a little sheen there. I'm just going to simply rub it through the ends of my hair, and it adds just a little bit more of a glossy look. So here is the final look from the front. I have parted my hair and brought both the pieces to my shoulders because I just don't have very thick hair and I prefer that the head-on view is quite lovely, but it does look good when it's brushed to the back, which I will show you now. So that is it from me guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was informative and educational even for myself. Um, though I've done this many times, I always learn something new with pin curl sets. All the products I use are listed below, including the makeup that I'm wearing today. And if you like this video, do subscribe to my channel. I post something every week. It can be about beauty as far as burlesque and vintage stuff goes, and also just everyday kind of more modern makeup. I'm about all of it. Until next time, my friends, remember that the future is bright, and I will see you in my next video.